models together and get a better output where instead of using one LLM for one question, can you have 10 LLMs answering the same question and get the better output? Will that result in a better LLM altogether? And that is exactly what this paper from Tencent China is exploring. More agents is all you need is the title of the paper. But before we jump into the paper, I would like to establish a very strong distinction. Whenever I tell about a concept like this to people around me, they think immediately about mixture of experts. And this is not mixture of experts. Mixture of experts is one deep neural network where you have got one particular component of it, which is a feed forward layer replaced with a mixture of experts where, for example, like Mixtral, one token would go to two experts and both the experts would give you the result and then some or average of that will go into the final outcome. But what we are seeing here is not that. It is a very simple ensembling. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with something like a random forest. A random forest in the classical machine learning algorithm is an evolution of a single decision tree into a forest that would ultimately result in something like a weighted voting and result in one final response, which proved to be a much better output than the single decision tree. The similar concept of ensembling models together has come into the large language model world and this paper is exploring that. In fact, this paper is going to a very simple approach where they're going to simply say, we're going to sample and vote, that's it. You're going to have 10 different models and then you're going to sample and vote. And they said that if you do that, the performance of the large language models scales with the number of agents instantiated. For example, if you see this particular chart, the first time when you have got five models as an ensemble size, this is the accuracy. And when you have 10 models, this is the accuracy. When you have 35 models, this is the accuracy. And as you can see, that the accuracy is increasing as you increase the number of models or in this case, somehow they like to call it the number of agents with the model ensemble. And that is exactly what we're going to explore further deep in this paper about how they went about it and what are the models and what are the sizes of the models and what kind of implications that they had and what kind of dimensions move this needle. And from the picture itself, you know that you can see three different sizes of models or three different families of models. You've got Llama 2, you've got GPT 3.5 Turbo, and then you've got GPT 4. Now, in this particular world, uh, which is more agents is all you need. So what they are exploring is that they're exploring the scaling property of LLM agents. Can we scale the number of LLM agents to have a better outcome rather than one single model. Again, this is very similar to building a tree from the set of random, from the set of decision trees that you have got. And instead of having one tree, you build a forest and then see the result. And ultimately you're using a sampling and voting method. So it has two phases. First, the query of the task. For example, if the query of the task is what is the capital of United States, then that query is sent to, let's say, all the models in your ensemble. For example, in this particular case, it will be sent to five models. In this particular case, it will be sent to 25 models. Once the question is iteratively fed into a single LLM or multiple LLM agents collaboration framework, then it generates multiple outputs. Now that output is taken back and then a majority voting is used to determine the final result. Now you might be thinking, is it a model that is making the final decision? No, it is not the model. And I'll get into the algorithm in short. Now what is happening here is that they have conducted several experiments across diverse a data set with diverse model range. So different model size, different model type. The way they are examining this is across reasoning and generation. Now to quickly jump into what the model has, what the experiment has also figured out is that the experiment results indicate a correlation between efficacy of the performance improvements and the difficulties of the problem addressed. This is a very important aspect of this paper. 
So they are going to explore the difficulty across three dimensions. The first one is inherent difficulty. The second one is the length of reasoning steps. And the third one is the prior probability of correct answer. Ultimately, they say that more agents is what you need. One of the most important contributions of this paper that I feel is the effectiveness of their particular method in tackling problems at different difficulties, then distill the properties behind so that they can propose a right optimization method for you to facilitate a co occurrence of our the, the finding that they have got. So what is happening here? So you have got a query and you've got a prompt or you've just got a query. Like for example, like I said, what is the capital of the United States? That is sent across LLM agents or LLMs you have got. The answer is taken from them and then a majority voting decides about what is the final result. So you have got sampling and then you have got voting. Now among this particular setup, you can see how the algorithm operates. So you have a query which is here the number of samples which is from the LLM and then it is sent across. The most important aspect of this is how the majority voting happens which is the ARG max. So it takes the majority voting based on the similarities of the responses. The more similar responses are grouped together and that response is selected as the winner. So technically this is like having your vector DB and then finding the closest ones and getting the output they are not using vector db that is just used for an example here. So to quickly repeat the algorithm, a query is sent across n samples of LLMs and the responses from n samples of LLMs are taken back and from that a similarity scores are calculated and then the most similar set of responses are used and then that is what is winning the majority voting. Now the three different types of data set that they used as arithmetic reasoning, general reasoning and code generation, which will be quite obvious in short. So what are the models that they used? A GPT series of models, GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4, Llama 2 chat models, 13 billion parameter model and 30 billion parameter model. So far we have four models, one, two, three, four. So among these four models, if you see the test that they've taken, so the reasoning and also the other tests that they've taken, GSM 8K, Math, Chess, MMLU, Human Evil. So of all these tests, if you can see here, the delta that if you have one model, but if you scale it up to 10 models, the same model, nothing different. Instead of having one Lama to 13 billion parameter model, you have 10 Lama to 13 billion parameter model. The green line is instead of having one Lama to 70 billion parameter model, you've got a seven, 10 Lama to 70 billion parameter model. Just repeatedly using the 10 models, you can achieve almost closer to GPT 3.5 Turbo on GSM 8K just simply using Lama to 70 billion. Now, while the paper is talking about more models, I have a different question here. See, even when you have 40 models, stacked together, which is let's say Lama to 70 billion. So that is technically translates to 700 billion, right? 70 into 10 or 70 into 40 in this case, which is like huge. Now that still does not beat a GPT 3.5 turbo, forget about GPT 4 altogether at all. I think this indicates the quality of pre-training and the importance of pre-training. Even though you can improve the model performance relative to its previous performance, this does not necessarily change the fact that those models are superior. For in this case, GPT 3.5 Turbo is unbelievably superior in math and chess even when you scale up the ensemble size of the open models, in this case, Lama to 70 billion and Lama to 13 billion to 40 number of ensembles or 40 LLM stacked together. This might change with different LLM benchmarks. Like for example, in MMLU, the delta decreases, like initially the delta is like this, and then the delta decreases here. But also you might notice a fact that even GPT fa family of models improve when you have got the sampling and voting methodology, which they are proposing in this particular paper. So even though this paper is about stacking more LLMs, what becomes obvious at this point is you can stack LLMs as much as you want and you can beat your previous performance. 
while stacking the models so for like example llama to 13 billion scored this and you can stack 10 llama to 13 billion to score closer to llama to 70 billion parameter model while at the same time but by stacking 10 llama to or like whatever number that you want 70 billion parameter model you are again holding the same delta that is possible and that is what this paper indicates that at every different level by stacking more models you can score higher value and this is quite helpful while stacking models because now you can have let's say parallel computing because this is uh, you are getting different responses and finally calculating the voting which are the majority voting so it does not require more compute in the single machine while you can have multiple machines the other important aspect is while you combine this method with a lot of other methods that are available like chain of thought, debate and reflection, this method improves other methods as well. I don't want to jump deeper into this. This is for you to read it out. But if there is one important thing that you should note is without the need of additional prompts or complex LLM collaboration frameworks, our method achieves the highest average ranking across different LLMs and tasks and that you can see highlighted in the hours section. So one, this method improves its own LLM. Two, this method also improves existing methods like prompt engineering and other items. But the most important thing that you should probably notice from this particular paper is the relative performance gain becomes more significant when the relative difficulty between the LLM and task increases. I mean, what does it mean? It means for a smaller model, for a very difficult task, the improvement is huge. While the larger model, like or the better model, uh, that when you increase the difficulty, the significant improvement is not very significant enough. The performance gain is not significant enough. So, and you can see that at different levels. And one of the thing that they're trying to measure here is that to see across different dimensions, increasing the number of steps, increasing the inherent difficulty or having model combination. Now, suddenly looking at this model combination like homogeneous model and heterogeneous model, you might think that heterogeneous model helps. Definitely heterogeneous model helps because they have thrown GPT-4 into the mix and you can see how much GPT-4 scores across different tests. So for example, in the GSM 8K, while the best model, even with ensemble of GPT 3.5 turbo has scored 8.85, GPT 4 single model alone is 0.88. Now I'm calling it a single model. We don't know the assumption behind GPT 4. It could be an ensemble. It could be mixture of experts. It could be an ensemble of distal models. But what you can see here is that if you want to reach closer to GPT 4 performance, you have to really stack a lot of close to 40 models of GPT 3.5 turbo. And that is quite evident in a lot of cases. So here it is closer. 0.85 is closer to 0 0.88, 0 0.39 is closer to 0.4. But chess is huge difference. MMLU, there is huge uh, difference. Not necessarily like 0.7 seems closer. But again, like in terms of the relative performance, it's huge. And human level, again, like you have a huge difference of 0.15. So the way I understand this paper is one, this paper is really good if you have multiple models stacked together. So if you have got multiple models stacked together, then this paper tells you that this works. Scaling LLM agents, increasing the number of agents actually increase the accuracy when you compare it with the previous level of accuracy for the same model. But that does not necessarily change all over again because you will scale up the other models as well and that will also give you a relative performance improvement. One another important factor is that the deployment of different LLMs at corresponding level of problem solving can improve the performance in a cost effective manner. What does it mean? It means that, for example, GPT 3.5 Turbo is used to generate the intermediate answer for, let's say, K is equal to 8, which is like, let's say, the number of models. But GPT 4 is then employed to solve the final answer with K is equal to 32. So at different steps, like you have got step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, step 5. So this is K1, K2, K3, K4, K5. And like 
at the easier step you can use a model like gpt 3.5 turbo while for the final answer you can use a model like gpt4 this way you have a layered approach that will not necessarily save your cost but also help you in deploying the mo model with a faster inference and much more efficiency so what they find out in the final step the performance gains increase then decrease by rising the inherent difficulty while you increase the difficulty the model's performance gain come down after getting like slightly up so this shows something that the inherent knowledge that the model gains from the pre-training is very important irrespective of how many models we stack performance gains increase with the number of steps you can see here as you increase the number of steps performance gain increases so you can see the number of steps in reasoning and then finally performance gains performance increases with the prior probability if the model had a prior probability of predicting the right output the performance gain is there for such models or stacked models together so overall, I think this paper opens the door to build large language model from multiple smaller models, unlike mixture of experts, unlike everything else that we have seen. This can also enable a distributed inference method, an async inference method. If you're from the JavaScript world, I think async is very important. You can collect 10 responses from different models at a different latency and then combine them together with the majority voting and then finally show the output. So that is possible with this model. But still one open question or one thing that we all can understand from this paper is while majority voting or sampling plus voting can help improve a smaller model, do a better judgment at a larger model level, larger models still rule the world because they have got an inherent knowledge that they got from pre-training that cannot be replaced just by stacking the same model. You cannot have 10 low knowledge models stacked together to perform like 10 upper knowledge model what you can probably do is you can stack 10 lower knowledge model that can be closer to one single upper man knowledge or higher knowledge model I, I this is something that a lot of people explore in the real world to have a sports team pick together they would always try to have uh, 10 above average players than one superstar and everybody else being dumb but that what this paper is saying that it's not about the weakest link of your team together but it is the strongest link of your team that can pull the things forward because this uses voting i think this explores a lot of interesting research avenue and the way we can deploy model i hope this paper was interesting to you if you have any question let me know in the comment section otherwise their code is available here for you to try it out it actually shows how you can explore llama 2 gpt 3.5 turbo and gpt 4 for the same set of tasks that they used here see you in another video happy prompting